and we have prayed all last week with a fantastic prayer meeting. So I, I, I want you to prepare to be challenged, which is the center theme of our, our revival, the challenge of the transforming church. And this lecture series will begin tonight with one of the best teachers I know. And I meant what I just said. So receive Bishop Whitehurst Wade as she come to lecture in her own way. God bless. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's try that again. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says, let everything that have breath, praise the Lord. If you've got any breath left, I need you to give God a praise. Come on, I need somebody who really appreciates God for who he is. I need somebody in this house to praise the Lord with me. Has the Lord done anything that set him apart from everybody else in your life? I need somebody to come on. I need a few more somebodies. Somebody that the Lord's been good to today. Somebody that the Lord's brought you safe. I need somebody. Hallelujah. I want you to know every time the believer says, hallelujah, in the earth realm, there's a resound from the angelic host that says, hallelujah. And that simply means all praise, all praise belong to God. While you're standing, I need you to stand on your feet. And I need you to appreciate the angel in this house. I'm going to need you to do more than that for me. I'm going to need you to do just a little more. He's the one that stands on the wall and watch for you. He's the lead prayer. He's the lead intercessor that goes up to God. I'm going to need you to give a little more than that tonight. Most assuredly as I'm standing here with due benevolence and love in my heart to his choice. Lady Anita Barnes, we bless you tonight. We bless you tonight. To the Macedonia Church, my family, my family right down in Eatonville, God bless you. You may be seated. I want to say something before I go right into my assignment. Is I believe every word that the Reverend Willie C. Barnes just said concerning me with him. Now you got to listen to me. Because I feel the exact same way about him. Amen. 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 There needs to be somebody in your life that you can say you love as you love yourself. The problem with the church is we've not known how to be in love relationships. We've been dipping in and out of affairs and we never got to a real relationship. But the body of Christ is all about a relationship. So over all of these years, it's been a long journey. But we're here together. Amen. And I bless this house tonight. I bless the house of Macedonia. The Bible says the man or woman of God has the power to bless or to curse. And I bless and I want to honor the Lord for my co-laborer, my friend, one that rides with me. Sometimes, wherever we are, we would just simply say, he is my ride or die. Elder Andrew T. Wade, amen. Amen, amen. I wouldn't be able to go home on Wednesday night Bible study if I didn't recognize, appreciate, 
and make you know that my pastor is in the house tonight, the Reverend Paris Tyrone Taylor, along with his lovely wife, Minister Regina Taylor. And the plus to that, not only is he my pastor, but I'm his mama. So, goes a long way. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We thank you for your loving kindness and the multitude of your tender mercies. Lest we forget to say by which you've already blotted out all of our transgressions. Therefore, we have entitlement to be in this place tonight. We are your people. You are our Father. You are our God. And we've gathered in this godly, holy assembly because you call for yourself another assembly. So we thank you now for what we are about to receive because of the power of the Holy Spirit that dwelleth in us. Bless every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. Let the word meet us in and at the point of our need. This is the confidence that I have in you. Kind sir, you always hear me when I pray. And this is the confidence that I have in you. Kind sir, every time I pray, you hear me. And this is the confidence that I have in you, mighty God. Your ear is always bent low to hear my cry. So I thank you for the manifestation of your promise. We are healed in this place. We are delivered and set free. We are revived because you promised that you would revive your works in the middle of the year. So we thank you. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I've got an assignment and I've got to run fast when you can't run long you have to run fast amen amen you got a lot of time you can run at your own pace i thank god again for the privilege to be in this house tonight i thank god to be on his order of the agenda that sets me in this place with you tonight I want to look at one verse of scripture in two versions. One verse of scripture in two translations. Romans chapter number 12, verse 2. Romans, the book that Paul pins as the grace of God. Romans chapter number 12, verse number 2, according to the King James rendering, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God, if you will, the rendering of the Good News Translation. Do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God transform you inwardly by a complete change of your mind. Then you will be able to know the will of God, what is good and is pleasing to him and is perfect. Do not conform yourselves. We must not get caught up in the ways of the world. We live in this world on a temporary basis. Yeah, that's right. We are passing through, if I were really at the Baptist church, the real Baptist church, somebody would say, guide me, oh thy great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this battering land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Hold me with thy powerful hand. Hey, bread of heaven, bread of heaven. Feed me till I walk no more. Guide me. Show me the way. I'm asking you to get me through this pilgrim land. This land is not my home. I often say I'm an ambassador representing the kingdom of God. An ambassador is one who's sent from one place 
to another place to accomplish an assignment and return back to the place where he or she was sent from with a report. This is not my home. I'm just journeying through here. I'm on an assignment, and I can't get out until my assignment is complete, but I don't want to stay a day longer than my assignment is complete. I'm on an assignment tonight. The challenge of the transforming church. Now, I want to talk to you from the lecturer's position. Um, preachers don't like for lecturers to get over into their space. So, we got to know the lines, and we got to know where to cross and where not to get out of. I'm in a box tonight. The box is called lecture. Amen. And if I get a little excited, it becomes treaching, but it never becomes teaching. Treaching is when you know you're supposed to be teaching, and you end up in a high gear, and you're telling yourself, come on out, come on out. And you're trying to come out, but you don't get out as quickly as you could, so I'm going to try not to get in there tonight. I want to talk tonight. The theme of the revival is the challenge of the transforming church. I'm leaving that to the preacher, but for me tonight, I want to share with you from the scripture, it's time to get new. It's time to get new. And I want to lift out some words so that we can have a meeting of the mind and an agreement of what we're talking about. Be not conformed. Let's talk about conformed. Behave accordingly to social acceptable conventions or standards. Really, you know, to be politically correct, okay? Okay. Okay, uh, if you notice, conformed is in the past tense of conform. Be not conformed right. Right. Uh, right. to this world, but be ye transformed. Let's, right. let's get a minute on transformed. Uh -huh. To make a thorough or uh, dramatic change in the form, appearance, or character of someone or something, if you note again, uh -huh. transformed is in the past tense of transform. But now when we get to renewing, we're in the scripture. I'm going to stay in the scripture. I'm safe there. When we get to renewing, it is to give fresh life a, a strength to something. To give fresh life a strength to something. To renew something. Now if you note, renewing is not in the past tense. It's in the present tense. Yeah. Ah, it's time to get new. It's time to get new. It's time to change the old mindsets. It's time to lay down the old way. Uh, you're not going to be effective in a new generation with an old generation mindset. We are the church. We are the church. It is my assignment tonight to make this clear. It's my business to get my point over in clarity. I don't do vague and I do and I don't do unclear because right in there I don't know where you are. And if we're going to talk, we might just as well know where we are. Now, if we're going to get new, we must change completely the old way of doing things as we have done them. To get new, we must develop new mindsets, new strategies, new methodologies. Then we will have new results. My dear friends, sisters, and brothers at the church that I love so well, the Macedonia Church, if we keep doing the same thing the same way, we're going to get the same results. If it failed us last week, I'm going to slow it down, Elita. And you try it again this week, you're going to end up with the same failure. That's right. That's right. That's right. We choose not to fail again. Now, I might fail in something, but what I'm not going to do is fail the same test again and again. It says to me, I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Now, I failed it the first time. I, I'm going to find out what part of the test I failed, and I'm going to study that part. Because when this test comes again, I am not going to make 67F on the same thing. I need you to sit down because you're going to get me in trouble. <sighs> Pastor already told you he loves me. Don't get me in trouble. <laughs> Tonight is my assignment to color this transforming church. 
I don't often remember passwords, and I, I got a new gear a few weeks ago, so they were saying, they tell you to give the name of your first pet. Sometimes I don't remember which one was the first one, but it got down to say, what is your favorite pastime? And I put coloring. Everybody who knows me knows that I love coloring. I want a simple coloring book. I don't want all the lines that you got to match. I'm not trying to take a class. I just want some simple coloring. I want some Cinderella. I want some Snow White and the Seven Drops. Don't bring me anything difficult because coloring is my pastime. So tonight it's my business to color this transforming church before we can handle its challenge. The church, who is the church? Or should I say the church? What is the church? Somebody says the church is who? Somebody says the church is what? Tonight I just want to say what Jesus said. He said to Peter, and I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus, you, you can't argue with Jesus about what he says about his own stuff. He says, and upon this truth, upon this rock, I will build my church. I will build it. Now that could cause for some consideration. If you're trying to tell me, Miss Preacher, that the church is a who, then what did Jesus mean when he said, I will build it? But he still said upon this truth, I will build my church. Now he's talking to Peter who is coming out of the discipleship uh, training now being prepared for the apostle um, journey that he must take. Because not long from now Jesus is going to get out. And once he gets out, the disciples can no longer be disciples because they were only disciples because they were following him to learn of him. And when he's gone, they can no longer follow him to learn. And then he can't send them until they are matured. Yeah. Talk to so he's about to come out of this discipleship format. Now we go and we talk about Paul. Paul talks about the household of God being built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now Jesus said, I will build my church. Now Paul comes along and talks about the household of God being built on a foundation. Right. Now Paul goes a little further and he talks to the Corinthians and he says about himself that he's a wise master builder. Yeah. He says, I've laid the foundation. Now Jesus said, I will build my church. Paul says it's built on the foundation. Now Paul comes back and says of himself, I am a wise master builder. He says, I've laid the foundation. And another builds on it. Could this be the church? Yeah. I just wanted to know. Can all this building really be the church? The household of God? Would that be us? Or are we so thus minded that when you built this beautiful structure that you built the Macedonia church? This structure is not the Macedonia church. If sold tomorrow, yeah. by next week, it could be a gambling casino. Yeah. The building becomes what the owner wants to do in it. Yeah. Ah, slow down. Yeah. I got to go, I've got to go. The church in this present age must get new now. Yeah. We don't have any more wait time. We must get new now. It's a new time, it's a new season, and it's a new people. To everything, there is a time and a season under the heavens, and there would be absolutely no need or not any need for time and season if there were no people to live in the time and season. Mm. Mm. It's a new time, it's a new season. Yeah. It's a new people. Yeah. I want to talk about three things, and I moved. The church in her culture. Uh -huh. The church in her culture must be steadfast. 
holding on to the eternal truths of the gospel from ages before us, which have been passed down to us, that we will pass on to generations following. Yeah. We must know our culture. Yeah. And in our culture, we must be steadfast. Yeah. We must come into the culture of the church for this present age. Again, if I was at the Baptist church, they would say to serve this present age. Yes. My calling uh -huh. on me and on. My power engaged to do my master's will. I'm just talking about the Baptist church. Yeah. That's my home. Ah, but in the Baptist church, there is a church that Jesus said he would build. Yeah. There is a church that Paul kept talking about his part of the building. What is our part tonight in continuously building this church? Uh -huh. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, in the church, the church in her language. The church in her language must be unmovable. Holy in all of our speech and conversation. Speaking the truth in love without compromise. Now, I know you don't know many people like this, but I'm going to introduce you for about 90 seconds to some people that I know. If you correct them, that wasn't love. But if you compromise the standard of God, which is holiness, I got to say that again. The step, I got to say that again. God, Peter says that God is holy and God's calling for a holy people. Now, I'm going to have to say that once again. The church in her language must be holy. I had a situation today at the trial school that I am uh, an employee. I, I'm not an employee of the church. I work for the school. And we had a youngster for the first time uh, at trial, which is a community Christian school. It's not a church school. It's a community Christian school. And um, he said a few words. So they brought him in to my office. And uh, I said, well, what was the words you said? I said, don't say the words. I said, just give me the alphabet. <laughs> it, now, I can't tell them to say the word. They just brought him in for saying the word. <laughs> so he said to him, I said, how did you get there? He said, I made a mistake. <laughs> and he said, I was on the park, me in the playground, and they were pushing me. And I made a mistake. And I said some words. Uh -huh. I said, well, how many did you say? Because <laughs> it seemed to me you had a conversation. Stay with me now. And he began to give me some more alphabets. Uh -huh. So I, I said, man, man, do you know this is a Christian school? He dropped his head. And tears began to come down. And he said, I'm sorry. I said, well, do you want to continue at this Christian school? He said, I want to be in this Christian school. I'm sorry, and I won't say those words again. See, there was an any further need for me to discuss any kind of results. Nope. I thought about it, and I said, I'm on my way to the revival, but revival has already come. <laughs> He came repenting. What else do you say? When we repent before God, God doesn't say any more about it. Did I bring that one? Come on, Macedonia. I thought I did. I gave him a handshake. I said, hey, man, I'll see you tomorrow in my office with a good report. He said, I won't say no more of those words when I come back. <laughs> Revival. Revival. We must, as the church, be holy in our language. We cannot compromise. There isn't any such thing as I made a mistake. It slipped out. If it's not in, it doesn't come out. In our language, church, we must be holy. I've got to go. I've got to go. My time is about out. And lastly, the church in her lifestyle, the church in her culture, the church in her language, and lastly, the church in her lifestyle, 
The church and her lifestyle must be abounding. We must always pass on the hope of our calling, which shall keep our hearts and our minds in perfect peace, even in these turbulent times. We must abound in our faith. We must journey well so that we can finish strong. If you don't journey well, you will not finish strong. We must abound. Now, I know you found out where I was. Paul said, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. The church must be steadfast in our language, we mu in our culture, in our language. We must be unmovable. We cannot give up. You cannot get caught with the jokester in a crowd that tells a joke that has no validity to your salvation and you get too tickled about it. You got to be careful who you laugh with, what you're laughing about because I want you to know they might just see you in church. I'm moving, I'm moving. When we do these things, we shall be thoroughly furnished in every good work and deed. We shall be dressed in the whole armor of God as we journey well and finish strong. What are you talking to us about? I'm really talking in my closing to Kalsul. It's time to get new. The church must get new. We aren't getting new in our faith. We're getting new in how we activate our faith. Yeah. This, 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 this generation that you want to throw away don't throw them away so quickly yeah. come on. Come on. there's still some preachers in this generation yeah. there's still some apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers there's still some some Sunday school workers yeah. there's still some people in this generation that you want to say well these the world has now labeled the millennials with such uh, an untoward presentation of their virtue until I don't even call them millennials anymore, just in case the world thinks that I see them the same as the world has labeled them. The church has got to get new. I want you to know, nobody told you, but we are passing. We are passing. Your next birthday, you're not going to be 10 years younger. We are passing, and we must get this generation ready to have the hope of our calling that we understand it is time for the church to get new. And if the church does not get new, we will stay where we've been. And I want you to know they are not ready for you, and you are not ready for them. But they are the church of the living God. When I was growing up, you said, how you do, man? Well, I thank God I'm saved and I'm sanctified and God's kept me all day long. I want you to know they don't have that much time. They don't want your testimony. Uh, that, that's not what they're asking for. They just simply said, hey, what's up? They were not dishonoring you. That's the language of their culture. When they holler at me, say, hey, Bishop, I'm hollering. I said, holler back, baby. And they will talk to me because I understand that the culture has changed. And in order for me to be effective in this culture, I must speak the language of the culture without compromise. I'm on my way to my seat. I'm going to finish on this. I have three grandsons. And the oldest and the youngest live here. And I tell them, I said, look, man, don't ask Franny for what you know you can't get. You're going to be sad, and my answer will still be no. We must not compromise. It does not mean that we can't get new. We are renewed. Our faith is ever turning us to this present generation. We must get new tonight. It's all right if you sing guide me, oh, that great Jehovah in another tempo. It's still guide me. 
It's all right if you sing. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It's all right if you change the beat. His, his grace is still amazing. And it's all right if they stand and sing. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay when he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Thoughtless to stand before the throne. Oh, Christ, the solid rock I stand. Get new, get new. Don't change his gospel. Just get a new way of presenting it. Lord, we honor you in this house. We thank you for the challenge for the transforming church. We are challenged. We must be prepared to get new. So we thank you now for the ability. We thank you for the capacity to get new. We thank you that we are sent to change a generation, but we must get new. So we ask you now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to help us to refocus our way and to look into your word and put on the whole armor of God. Even if it has a new stitch, it's still your armor. Bless all over this house tonight. Empower us. Not for us, but for the work of the call that you've given us. We thank you now that you have enabled us that we can handle the challenge of this transforming church as we get new. God bless you. Amen.